Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fine episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and today I've actually got someone who I've already been on a podcast with, just not this one. Um, I got to talk with Jana Landry on a on a Jeff Cecil's podcast, who's been a guest on this show as well, and I was just so... I'm, I'm just going to drop adjectives. I was impressed. I was delighted. I was tickled. I wanted more. So I just, I asked Jenna if she wanted to come on my podcast. She said yes. And I got really excited because she was so much fun to talk to. So let me soft introduce you to Jenna and then I'll let her take it from there. Jenna is known for her sought after ability as a communication and vocal coach. She works with high level leaders in finance, law, hospitality, as well as public figures and entertainers. Um, she is, I dare say, a dynamo. <laughs> I love everything she has to say and the way that she has to say it. So I'm going to get out of the way and let Jenna say hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Yes, I love talking. And more than talking, telling your story of what I do. I and coach and teach people how to learn how to tell their story on all levels, because that's really what communication is. It's connecting on the eye level, the soul level, the audible level with your voice, all of it. You know, it hits all those really wonderful points that we as humans need. Yeah. And I remember something, something somebody told me, I, I, I think the earliest point in my life, I remember this very early. Like I'm still like, maybe I'm in middle school or maybe like, it's, it's definitely like, I'm still in like young teenage Kevin, which we don't need to talk too much about because he was a mess. <laughs> I remember <laughs> like, all young teenage there. people were messes. <laughs> still <laughs> are. Comes the territory. <laughs> yeah. But I remember somebody telling me really early on that you're always communicating. Yes. So here's a, here, here, like, here's a very interesting statistic, Kevin. Yeah. Over 70% of our communication is nonverbal. Now I'm going to say mm -hmm. that again, because it is such a rock star thing that I lead with when I'm coaching, when I'm giving keynotes, and when I'm just talking to people. Over 70%. So here's the thing. Yes, we need to learn how to use our voices and we need to be compelling and interesting with the vocal quality and the pacing and all that stuff. But more importantly, we need to connect or we need to understand that we do connect on a nonverbal, you know, a nonverbal platform with our eyes, with just the facial expressions, mm. with our body language, with all of these wonderful things that we use as a species to communicate. It is the voice, but it's also everything else. So it's kind of a cool thing. People get really freaked is. out when they hear that. Over 70% is nonverbal. Think about that. That's and a lot. That's a high number. That's a lot. And it's, it's, it, it totally jibes with what I've been experiencing, especially in the last few years, because I mean, at the height of the pandemic, we're all, we have half our faces covered most yeah. of the time when we're in public at the, at the, at the peak, peak, peak. And, and you can you can see people's eyes and that's about it. And so I, I remember thinking so frequently about making sure that when I smiled at someone that they couldn't see my, my mouth, but they could yes. see my eyes. And yes. so I would let my smile, I would consciously make sure that is your whole face smiling? Is your body smiling? Are you like, and I would be thinking about my posture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was moving around in public spaces, thinking about how much more that community, it's almost like when you uh, like um, the way that when you're, when you lose a sense, like you go deaf or you go blind, your other mm -hmm. senses get sharper. And I really felt like that sense of how I was communicating really got, I, I, my awareness of it was more enhanced. And I feel yes. like I learned to pay more attention, not just to what other people were saying with their body and their eyes and their nonverbals, but also what I was saying with all yes. of that as well. Yes. Well, so here's an interesting thing about that too, as well, is it taught us a lot. The pandemic taught us a lot about communication because we couldn't use the audible again, or we could, but it was masked by a mask, you know? Mm -hmm. So Eyes were important. Body language was important. Just connection was important. Face-to-face -face connection was important, even though we had this mask on. And that's a lot about what I talk about in my coaching. It's a, it's a big, hairy deal is you've got to connect on a lot of levels, not just with the, the voice. The voice is the most important element of all the senses when we're communicating, but it's not the only element. So a lot of what I talk about with people is understanding how your body works. You know, don't be disconnected from your body when you get up in front of people. Your body's a big part of it. Make sure that you're engaged in all, in all aspects of your communication. So that's, you know, and the good news about that is we kind of do that naturally when we're just walking through life, yeah. you know, so it's just a matter of not being intimidated by doing that then in front of people or when you have to give important information. 
so it's kind of it's it's cool it's a fun yeah. thing what well, let's let's talk about that a little bit from the perspective of you and how you got your how did, how did you become this this person that you are how did you become this coach how did you become you how did you how did you exist no how did you how did you get your start as a coach like was it was it a realization that coaching was the best expression of your gifts and the impact you wanted to have well that's a big that a key that, moment yeah. come in it's a big question so yeah it's a big question and I'll tell you, Kevin, so I started actually, I started performing professionally as, a, as an entertainer, as a mm. singer and an actor, first singing at a very young age. I mean, I was singing in choirs and doing solos and doing all the theater things, you know, all those little showbiz things that moms and dads are like, <laughs> oh, Lord, did I birth one of these? <laughs> but, but yes, yes, mom and dad, you did. So, so I did a lot of theater and voice, um, started teaching when I was like 17, 18, and had a pretty, you know, pretty strong career as a a vocalist and an actor through my 20s and such. I started teaching at 21 with a very well-known voice teacher in the Hollywood area. So I was teaching people, adults that were actually working in TV and film and recording uh, at a pretty young age. And I was passionate about it. So I'm not one of those typical teach if you don't know how to do. I was doing first and then teaching and continuing to do both. And there are a lot of mm. people that do that. And mm. what happened as I continue to do showbiz, and I still am in you know aspects of showbiz, I still am a professional singer and I've got, you know, I sing, um, I do some acting still, a lot of theater and that kind of stuff. But what I'm really passionate about now is taking these skills that we learn as professional performers and actors, understanding how, number one, the body works, how to tap into your emotion easily and quickly and and authentically, that's the biggest thing. I know authentic mm -hmm. is a big, you know, buzzword right now, but it's true. It's finding <laughs> that kind of stuff. And then and then being able to communicate it, whatever it is. And what happened in my kind of 30s is I started having, as I moved in more balancing uh, professional, just like working in the in the world with the showbiz, working in corporate America and doing small business stuff, is I found that a lot of people were having struggle with the skills that we as performers learn pretty early on, and that's to tap into <laughs> real emotion, to use your voice um, as an instrument for your passion, for whatever that is, and to understand how the voice works. And again, what we talked about a little earlier, how to connect all the other stuff with you know, the voice, and first and foremost, with your little soul, with your heart, with your passion, with your why. And so I found a lot of people were coming to me and saying, Jan, you know, you do this on stage in a masterful way because you've been doing it for a long time. You do it on camera. You do it on the phone. You can, you know, you do it in webinars. How can I learn how to do those, you know, how to do that, have those skill sets? And so that's a lot of kind of what transitioned me into the coaching part of it. So my whole thing, what I tell people is I take some of the showbiz acumen and the showbiz skills that we learn as professional performers, and I roll that into how can you learn this skill set as just a professional business person? How can you tap into it in a fairly easy way without, you know, having to spend 10 years in singing lessons or 10 years with acting lessons or whatever? Because <laughs> the truth, Kevin, is it's not, you know, brain surgery. It's very, these are natural this is natural fundamental skills that we have as human beings to connect and to communicate and to um, talk about our passion, you know, talk about what it is that we like doing or what we want to educate people about. It's that. And so I, yeah, I have a whole little regimen that I put people through about, yeah, you got to know about how to breathe. Of course, you got to mm -hmm. understand really rock star breathing because that is kind of your gasoline to your little machine. And then you got to know how to use your voice, how to pace, how to pace mm -hmm. dialogue so that when there are important points to make, you understand how the voice can really capture uh, your listener's interest by how you use your voice. Mm. You got to look into people's eyes when you're talking to them, whether you're talking to two people or two million people, there's, there are tricks to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you just got to understand how to kind of not write a speech, but how to engage conversations so that there are ups and downs to it. There's interest to it. When you're delivering really important information, how can you do that in a way that your listener remembers? So there's all these little tricks. Yeah, there's just all a lot of these little tricks. And that's kind of what I have carved out in my coaching is how to go in and teach one person or a group of 25 or an entire room of, you know, 250, 500 people, how to use these skill sets and really 
you know, become a much stronger communicator, but also just a stronger presenter, um, a more interesting person for somebody to listen to. And that's really what I, you know, what I do. Yeah, I love that you identify you identify this very powerfully in, in the way you speak about it. And I think it's so important to, to realize that this is something that we already do. And it's also yes. something that we already want to do. And what you're bringing is some some intentionality to it. Another big word that gets thrown around a lot, but doing this with intention. And, and the intention has like almost two prongs as I see it. And this is where a coach is just the ideal person for something like this kind of development is you get the actual, the tips, the tricks, like the practicality, mm -hmm. the this is what you do. This is what you learn, develop the skill, practice this, and you get all the concept stuff where it's yes. like how to make sure you speak from your heart and speak from a position of self-awareness and vulnerability and connection. And so you get all like the high concept and the boots on the ground, like do it this way, five step, seven step, you know, yes. focus on your breathing. This is how we're going to do that. It's like, it's practical and it's, you know, high concept in a way that like naturally, I mean, it naturally belongs together. It fits together beautifully, but it's yes. just so it, it addresses the, the full spectrum of developing your ability to express yourself. That's exactly right. And here's the, here's the beauty. I can find something interesting in every single person that I talk to. I can, and I can find their little fun, whatever their little quirk or their little sizzle, as I call it, you know, whatever that little <laughs> element is, the beautiful thing is everybody has, has a, a few little aspects or elements to their persona or their presentation that people are going to relate to. That's the cool thing. And you just have to have somebody like me find that in you, if you don't know where that lives, you know what I mean? Cause we all have these wonderful little personal traits that can connect to other people. Yeah. I say even introverts and even nerds, like people say, well, how do you pull like somebody that's just very analytical and has kind of a monotone voice? There are ways to pull energy and pull fun little things out of everybody. So you, it's not just for the person who has the big, bold, beautiful voice or the, you know, big, huge personality that is compelling and interesting to listen to as a keynote or as a boss or as a politician or as a whatever, you know, I can find that in anybody. And it's not, again, it's not, you know, anything that's just tremendously complex to find. It's really finding that human element that makes everybody who they are and pulling it out and, and teaching people how to tell a story around it. Now, yes, you're absolutely right, Kevin. We got to give important facts a lot of times we got to give some content because yeah. here's what's not good is when you get up in front of somebody and you just blow a bunch of personal stories without content we really desire um, some of that knowledge too that whomever is speaking is giving but it's the key is wrapping a bunch of fun stuff around it you know what i mean so <laughs> oh go, yeah oh my god that was so interesting and i learned something like mm -hmm. you said i learned five points i learned seven points or i learned you know the the 20 minute way to blah, blah, blah. But around that information, that's very important that that keynote or that speech person or that whomever is trying to give, you do want to connect on a personal level with some fun stuff and some, you know, some of your quirky, whatever that personality is. So, and that's what I do. I show you how to use all those elements to build a very strong sense of your personal communication and kind of brand you, as I call it, you know? Yeah. 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 It's re I'll, that's really what it is right there. That, that branding that, which is just another word mm -hmm. for your character, your personality. You, we've yes. talked a lot about like basically the how, like how you go about coaching people who do you have a particular focus, a, a certain type of person or a certain industry that you focus on um, beyond what you've already spoken to on, in regards to like entertainment and corporate. Is there, is there like, what are your, what's your, what's your clientele look like today? And what's like, what kind of coaching do you tend to focus on? Do you still do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching? Is it, you know, groups of like anywhere from, you know, three to 30 or 300? Is it, I mean, all of the above. I don't know if this translates to like a book form, but do you like, do you have books or like workshops that you put together? Like basically like who are you coaching these days and how are you going about reaching them? So the big, the big overview picture is I coach anybody that wants to enhance their communication. So I have three different levels as to how I do it. Great question, Kevin. I, okay. I coach individuals, <laughs> especially people like, let's say your millennials or your, you know, Gen Xers that are in that, let's say thirties to late forties, and they're transitioning to leadership. They've mm. been in kind of that mid-level management or whatever, and they suddenly are transitioning to leadership and they don't necessarily feel like they have the skill set to understand how to communicate with everyone. So it's that mid-level 
Um, of course, I work with CEOs and, you know, like a, I've worked with a few politicians where they are running for mayor or they're running for an office and they need to be a lot more compelling on a wide range of ages and types and socioeconomic, that kind of thing. That's that's the individuals. Yes. And physicians that are transitioning from a corporate structure, let's say, and suddenly they're opening up their own practice and they do have to be their oh, brand. Yeah. That's a biggie, especially in Nashville. Yeah. A lot of physicians that are, again, at that mid-level where they want to go out and branch off on their own. So that's a big one. But my what I enjoy doing is working with, like you said, that, that uh, group of people that are like 25, 30 uh, in a room. And we talk about, okay, let's just get down to the brass tacks of some real important fundamentals. Uh, so I have one called Dazzle Your Listener, and that's the name of my book. My book is basically a simple book about learning how to communicate better. It starts with the history, with kind of the structure of the voice in a simplistic way, how to exercise that voice. It moves into understanding generational communication, and then it kind of gets into brand you. And what are your fun little sizzly, you know, kind of quirks that you have that you can build upon? And then I talk a little bit at the end of the book about understanding communication on a lot of different platforms, like the Zoom and the mm. phone call an email and, you know, talking to three versus 300, you know, and there are differences there and some of the body language things that you can get into. But what I have been the most tasked to talk about now in my keynotes and my lunch and learns is interesting. Mm. For the first time in history, we have four really specific generations in the workforce. We have our baby mm. boomers, who mm -hmm. have been in the workforce for 25 years, whatever, and they have a real specific way that they like to do stuff. They they are these lifers, you know, they are the people that are going to be very dedicated in, to their business and very competitive. Then you got your Gen Xers that for the first generation that kind of had that mixed media, they understand mm -hmm. emails and texting and all that, but they also have the influence of the old way and the old protocols. We got our millennials, and that's one of the big ones that I have a lot of my friends in that 40s, 50s, 60s to say, how the heck do I talk to them? You know, what's going on with them? They don't want to work. <laughs> they want to bop around from company to company. You know, so there's that generation that is very much um, a self-starter. They don't really like to team up. They don't want to, you know, they like to kind of figure things out on their own. And then we have our ever-loving Gen Zers, which is one of my favorites because I own one. I have a 21-year-old. <laughs> And the whole Gen Z thing is they don't know how to talk face to face. The, everything they've mm -hmm. learned has been through technology. Everything in their life is technologically driven. So they don't know how to look at somebody and speak. And so that keynote, believe it or not, Kevin, that one is the one I'm getting the most requests to do at lunch and learns and businesses and women's groups. And, you know, so it is very interesting that a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, kind of the gamut is is the short answer yeah. to your question um i work yeah. with individuals i work with groups in businesses one of the segments that i really am passionate about and i would like to build in my practice is going into that small to mid-level business and working with a company for 90 days and that means you get me for a couple of times a week to do workshops wherever you know mm. in in your lunchroom in your in where you can either pull in groups different groups at different times, or you can work with the same set of that mid-level management or your sales teams and work with businesses for like a 90 day period, because it is a game changer. And a lot of what I talk about is first, let's get the individual really hip to who they are and how they communicate, but then let's get your whole team on the same page so that you are messaging the same, you know, the same, whatever it is, the same speak sales speak or management speak or any of that. Yeah. So that you're all messaging in a very consistent way with yeah. all of these different generations in the workforce, because you've got your young adults that are, are used to communicating in very short little, <laughs> I always say it's like non-complete sentences <laughs> and, if, and there's not going to be a lot of eye contact and, you know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I mean, I give my Gen Zers a bad rap, but the truth is they're also the, the generation that kind of wants to fix everything that's happened before them, you know? So yeah. But truly, I mean, think about this. We've got these four generations in the workforce, and if they all communicate in a different way, like that can be a um, a brand nightmare, as we say, or you know what I mean? They're not all speaking mm -hmm. the same language and the same brand within the company structure and the company's 
sort of mission statement or whatever. So that's that's a an area that I really am passionate about and would love to expand on. You know, I do good. Yeah. I have a, a strong, the individual stuff and I love doing keynotes. I also do some women's leadership, oh, you know, good. things where a woman is in, let's say in an industry that is mainly male focused. And I'll, and I'll talk about like some of just some of the things that a female can do to really um, level the playing field in the way we communicate a little bit differently than maybe, you know, a, a man would in a situation. So there's all of that. It's kind of interesting, Kevin. It's like a big fat, you know, melting pot. It's like a, it's like a gumbo. You're just throwing in a whole <laughs> lot of different peoples and types and you know, inclusion is big right now. So it's understanding mm -hmm. just really how to communicate on a fundamental level where everybody kind of understands what, it, what you're talking about. That really is the thing. Yeah, it's so foundational to, I mean, I mean, literally everything that we do in life, personally and professionally, that when you when you start to like scratch the surface a little bit, it's like, okay, where, how, where can this be useful? How can this help? Mm -hmm. it's, the, the better question is, where wouldn't this help? And the well, answer and is, that's you know, it. It, it's gonna. It would. It would help everywhere. Everyone could benefit from this kind of development because we all need yes. to connect. And I, I love. I love. Love. Love your focus on the intergenerational communication yes. and intergenerational connection because it's. I. I feel like both there is such a strong need for it. Mm -hmm. And there's just there's and there's like a few. It's. It's not like like you've been saying. It's not that complicated, but it needs some attention and some care and yes. some guidance and some work. Mm -hmm. um, That's and exactly I, just, right. I love how passionate you are about moving into that. I really like that too, because here's the deal. It's going to make everybody better. It's going to make everybody feel better. Like when you, exactly. when I go into these businesses and do these lunch and learns and I just talk to everybody, because the interesting thing is there's usually four generations sitting there looking at me and <laughs> the older generations, you know, that our baby boomers and our older Gen Xers have kids that are now starting to be in the workforce. So they're like, oh, for, for the love of the Lord, I can't talk to my 20 year old Jan. What do I do? You know, it's like, okay, so let's just cut, let's get down to brass tacks. You've got to understand that communication. So here are my three C's. This is my takeaway. Mm -hmm. And I talk about this in my book and I talk about it almost anywhere I go. And that is clear, concise, and commanding. So you've got to be real clear about the language you use. You can't get too trendy. You can't, because that identifies you as a Gen Z or, or you know, like my, my son used to talk to me and when he was like 16, 17 and go, hey, bro, which is bro. <laughs> it's the slang for, bra is the slang for bro, which I had to learn, you know, and he was in football and stuff. So it was very, you know, multi-ethnic and multi-whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it was just funny. So he'd say, hey, bra, to talk to me. Like when he's 16, I said, okay, first off, I'm not your bra. I'm, I'm your, your mom. mother. I'm your mother. <laughs> and I can take you out. No, I didn't say that. But, you know, truthfully, it's like, it's like, so, so you've got to be real. So the clarity in my first C is, you know, you got to just like cut, cut all, a lot of the noise out that we are absolutely barraged with every day with video and social media and TV and radio and billboards and all that. And just get to the real simple, clear, beautiful language. And that's how you start. You know, how do you feel? What do you want from me? Am I understanding you correctly? You know, these kinds mm -hmm. of things that are just basic Let's just talk about whatever it is we need to talk about. That's the clarity. Concise, again, is not getting too long-winded, but trying to keep it to simple phrases, simple ideas, simple concepts, so that everybody, again, on a human fundamental level, we all kind of, oh, we all go, oh, okay, that's what he means, or oh, okay, that's what she's saying. So that it doesn't get too flowery, too long-winded. You don't wrap whatever it is you're trying to say around too much goo, as I call it, you know, get rid of the gray matter and get down to the black and white kind of thing. <laughs> and then the commanding, of course, is now that's where I come in. That's where you understand pacing, pitch, pauses. Those are three P's I use. What's interesting is we're always trying to fill up the space because we're so now our attention span, right, mm -hmm. is getting shorter and shorter with all of this messaging that we get at such a fast level and everywhere. It's everywhere now on shopping mm -hmm. carts, in the sky, you know, everywhere. I know. <laughs> so a lot of the commanding part is don't be afraid to just set some white space in there, set some silence in there, set some, a few seconds of just silence to let the brain relax to let everybody relax in the room and kind of regroup. Mm -hmm. And that is a really 
compelling and important thing that I talk to people about in communication. It's okay to stop and let some space go and let the air, let there be no sound and let movement and breath happen, you know, mm -hmm. because that's actually interestingly, Kevin, that's how we learn the brain, mm -hmm. the brain retains information. And here's an, another, another cocktail party, um, you know, thing that you can say at a cocktail party that'll make you really popular. <laughs> the brain learns in odd numbers more easily than an even. So when you're mm -hmm. giving information to somebody, whether it's one person, whether it's your kid, whether it's a room full of sales executives, or you're a politician. If you give facts or information that you want them to remember in threes, fives, or sevens, they're going to remember it more readily than in twos, fours, or sixes. Isn't that interesting? It is, yeah. Yeah. Huh. For some reason, we, re we remember odd numbers a little bit easier. We retain odd numbers a little bit easier. We can we can kind of summarize them and we can place them in order in our brains a little easier. So that's one of the commanding things that I talk about. Make sure that hmm. you're giving information in a simplistic, organized fashion, but also give it to them in threes and fives and that'll that'll set a little bit easier. So these are things that I talk about a lot in just, again, Get that language simple and commanding, but also concise for your listeners and cross generations. It's going to be a little bit easier and uh, it, it's going to set more with all the generations. As expected, I've, I've, I lost track of time and we're already running very <laughs> close to late. I, I honestly, I could do this all day with you and we, I might, well, I, I was going to say I might do it again we will be doing this again. <laughs> because I'd love to. It's such, a, it's such to. an important topic and there's so many different ways to explore it. And I, yes. I, you have so much, to the surprise of no one, you have so much to say on it. That's like very insightful. Little nuggets here and there, big stuff, like practical stuff. So anyway, before I let you go, and I do have to let yes. you go, but before I do that, where can people best learn more about you? Just learn more about who you are, what you do, how you do it. And also where can people best connect with you if they want to start a conversation, maybe start a relationship, maybe get some of your coaching, maybe, you know, buy your book, like, et cetera. So where can people find you and where can people connect with you? Okay. So it's really easy. Janalandry.com. I mean, that's where, um, <laughs> and, and I will, uh, full disclosure, I'm going through a website redevelopment a little bit. So it's going to be, yeah, I, I'm in transition to expanding a little bit more, but the truth is Kevin, I've got everything on there. Um, except my book, you can just go to Amazon, Jana Landry. The title of the book is dazzle your listener. And again, it's on all levels. It's a workbook. It's got some little homework, um, at the end of a few chapters for you to start to think about who you are and how you started in communication. But yeah, I've got, um, I've got my personal email right on my website. You can email me. I am very um, accessible. I love <laughs> to talk to people about their issues. Email me and ask me anything. When I am doing keynotes or when I'm in with businesses, I say, ask me anything. Honey, I'm from showbiz. I've heard it all. I have heard it <laughs> Oh, Kevin, you cannot imagine some of the questions I've gotten. <laughs> I probably don't want no? to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, some of the things people have asked me is, is pretty interesting, but that, hey, that's another podcast. <laughs> that, that, that's another, that, that'll, be, that'll be for the After Dark episode. Exactly. That we were, I was going to say, that'll be, that's, that's the After Midnight with a glass of wine or something. But anyway, <laughs> but truthfully, I mean, yeah, I, I'm very accessible. Just go to janalandry.com. Uh, my email's at the bottom of all the contact pages or all the pages and just email me then we can start a conversation there i love it and though i hate to say it let's end our conversation here jenna thank you so much for talking with me today thank you so much for your energy and your passion uh, um and then the cocktail party anecdotes that i'm, I'm a little <laughs> back and now i'm like filing these away in my brain like oh that's interesting so th thank you for being here with me today and also thank you for doing what you do and going uh, about it the way you do it i think it's i think where you focus your energies and your work is so it's so needed it's so necessary and so valuable right now so i'm just i'm 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 grateful on a personal level that you were here and i'm grateful on a general level that you're out there <laughs> well thank you kevin i've really enjoyed this that's you know again i love talking about talking you know <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, that's a perfect place to end it. To the audience, you know what to do next. Links in the show notes. Jen is really easy to find. Reach out, connect. You won't be sorry. And we will talk to you again here very soon. Okay, thank you.